Are you forgetting to catch your racket on your forehand? If you are, and if you're not catching the racket at the end of your forehand swing, it could be causing more inconsistency, more unforced errors, and more frustration. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. And I'm absolutely passionate about helping players master the fundamentals, help them get to the next level faster. And one of the big fundamentals that I teach is catching the racket on the forehand. Now, before we get into that, I want you to smash that like button if you get any value out of today's free lesson. Because when you do, the YouTube algorithm is going to share this video with more folks that want to get better at tennis. And I know you don't want your opponents to learn this information, but there's a lot of other people around the world that can benefit. So smash that like button, make sure you turn your notifications on and the subscribe, you've subscribed to the channel. All right, with that being said, let's get going with this lesson today. Now, I'm a big proponent of catching the racket on the forehand, and there's a lot of coaches that disagree. There's players that disagree as well, but I'm gonna do my best in this lesson to talk to you about why I think it can help you solidify your forehand and make it that much better. So, what we wanna focus on right now is this fundamental of catching the racket on the forehand. Now, there's a couple of great reasons why you want to do this. First off, if you get nervous on your forehand, <clears throat> there's a tendency for players, and I, I experienced this myself, the, the arm gets really heavy and tight and you start steering the ball. So what happens is that your swing starts to look something like this, where you swing across. And your arm is heavy and you don't get that extension, you don't get that low to high swing. And the low to high swing with extension is the one that's going to allow you to get depth and clear the net and make the ball when you're really tight. Quick story, I was playing Nicholas Lapenti, who got to six in the world at one time. I was playing him in Acapulco on clay, and I remember being in this exact same position. Now, I wasn't necessarily finishing high every time, but I know that I was swinging and missing forehands, and I was probably finishing down in here. And I told myself in this one moment, I said, okay, no matter what, you're going to catch the forehand. So we're going to talk about that in a moment. If you're forgetting to catch the racket, I've got a little tip for you. But I started doing that, and on every forehand, except for buggy whips, on every forehand, whether I finished high or whether I finished lower, I caught the racket every time. And what this did with my nerves is it gave me a consistent thing to focus on the whole match. Every time I swing, I'm catching the racket with those perfect fundamentals. And it really took my anxiety down and it helped me feel just more controlled under pressure. And I don't think I missed a forehand the rest of the match. I ended up winning that match. It was a big upset for me to beat Lapenti on clay. And I attribute it to making that decision in that moment. And the only thing I was focusing on was catching the racket. Now, I'm going to go deeper here on to how to catch the racket. It isn't just about catching it. It's actually to have a specific, tangible way to do it. And the reason why I think it's better for most players to work on this concept, especially if they get tight and nervous. And I don't know about you, but I used to get tight and nervous a lot when I played, and I needed this tip to help me. So, the first tip that I want to give you around catching the racket is that at the end of the swing, when you catch... I want you to practice laying it in your fingertips. Lay it in your fingertips on the throat. When I tell people a lot of times to catch the racket, they just death grip it like this, right on the throat, not even high enough, like where the grip and the throat start to meet. So you want to make sure that when you swing, you get it on the throat of the racket. Okay? Very important. The reason it, it's so important is that it gives you space at the end of the swing. If I catch the racket, on the grip or just above the grip and I grip it tight like this, I'm more contracted. I'm in here more. So by catching it up on the throat, you're, you're catching the racket and you're creating more space and more extension. Okay. Now, I talk a lot about skipping the rock on the forehand, really accelerating. So when you accelerate and then you catch the racket, look at how I take it out of the hand. And so I just lay it in the throat of the racket like this. So I swing 
and I lay the racket in the, in the throat. This is a great foundational fundamental that any player, if I was working with a pro right now struggling with his forehand, I'd make him do that. If I was working with an, a WTA pro, I'd make them do this. And you can do it finishing high, and you can do it finishing lower. It doesn't matter. But in both cases, I'm catching the throw to the racket. And I'm, look at all the space I have here. Look at all the relaxation. This is to offset the biggest problem players have, tight on the forehand, tight on the forehand. We want extension, we want relaxation, and we want to catch it on the throat. Now, for those coaches out there that I've heard them say, you don't want to catch the racket because it impacts your acceleration. You can't accelerate the racket if you have to slow it down to catch it here. And I kind of see where they're going with this, but I have to respectfully disagree. And let me explain. The part where you want to accelerate on the swing is you want to accelerate at the right moment that you're making contact with the ball. But what happens after you make contact? You actually will start to decelerate. So you don't want to keep swinging fast into the, into the hand here. You actually want to accelerate at contact, and then it slows down after. Accelerate, decelerate. So watch how long it takes me to catch the racket here. You see that? So I accelerated on that ball. I got it into my hand faster that time. I'll go slower this time. There. So what this is going to do by accelerating and then slowing a little bit at the end, it actually creates a smoother swing. And a lot of players struggle with that smooth swing. They, they actually slap at it and they go too fast after they make contact with the ball. I want you to slow down after you make contact. So if that means you have to even stay slow here, slow, that's a beautiful forehand right there. That ball hit the back fence on the first bounce. Yeah, it wasn't the biggest forehand I could ever hit. Of course, I could accelerate more. But most of you have to slow down your swing and get smoother. You need more smoothness and more extension. See, that ball, that ball landed on the baseline, and then it bounced up on the back fence. And I'm not swinging fast. It's being smooth and controlled and relaxed instead of accelerating and going too fast after contact. This is the biggest thing messing players up. So I think coaches should stop talking so much about racket head speed and focus more on catching the racket, getting people to feel balanced and smooth at the end of the swing. The other reason why I like catching the racket is that when you swing, when you swing and catch the racket, it gives you an end point that's consistent every single time. Instead of finishing here and here and here and all over the place, all different swings. It's the same consistent fundamental swing every time. It gives you an end point, consistency. This is my forehand day after day after day. So when I'm warming up before a match, I'm here. Warming up for a match, I'm here. And if you're forgetting to do this, you know what that means? It means that you care too much about winning than you care about this skill. So you go out on the practice court and you commit. No matter what, I'm going to catch the racket every single time. And I'm going to build that strong foundation on my forehand. And this is where the foundation is built. I remember I went for a lesson with Robert Lansdorp who got to who who'd coached five number ones and many other WTA and ATP players in the top 50. Now, I didn't make it to the top 50, but I took a lesson from him, and I remember he always had me catch the racket on my forehand to work on extension. When I was drilling, that's what he wanted me to do. And, he, and on the backhand side, he wanted me to extend out in front like this, a la Jimmy Connors, a la Tracy, Tracy Austin, Chris Everett. He, he taught people how to drive through the ball. This is a great drill to catch it out in front, Again, if I look at players, they're wrapping. They're not extending. They're too close to the ball. So catching the racket with extension is a huge fundamental. If you're forgetting, stop forgetting. Commit to it. More, than, more important than winning is catching the racket. And that's what I want for you. So in short, make sure if you want your forehand to be a bigger weapon, you're going to focus on catching the racket. And you're going to catch the racket on the throat, whether you finish high or whether you finish lower, it doesn't matter. 
catch the racket and commit to it. Don't catch it on the grip. Don't catch it right here. Don't catch it with your whole hand. Work on catching it, laying it in the hand like this. It might not be easy at first. I've worked with players. It's not the easiest thing. But just look how I'm laying it in my hand every single time. And you can do that. You can practice that. Make that your skill that you commit to for the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and beyond. If you enjoyed this lesson today, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment or a question below. I'm here to help. I hope this lesson made sense. If it didn't, again, leave a comment or a question below. And before you go, I got a free lesson. I should say a free bonus for you today, free membership. We have 21 lessons to give you absolutely free, no credit card required. All you have to do is click the link below or somewhere in this, in this video, and you're gonna have access to the Tennis Evolution app where we have free membership lessons to help you out. Also, it's in our online portal. This is, if you wanna take the next step with me, this is the place to go, and you don't have to invest any dollars, no money whatsoever. I just want you to get started seeing the type of lessons that can help you improve. Thanks again for your time today, and we'll see you at the next lesson.